All right, so I had a viewer ask just what the hell's going on with my signal chain. So I figured I'd do a quick walkthrough of what I've got going on at the moment. Um, starting with the, well, starting with the guitar, I guess, huh? I have my um, Eastwood Warren Ellis CDR guitar, uh, which is kind of a, looks like a, it's a Mustang kind of guitar shape. I think the scale length is still standard scale length. I don't think it's a shorter scale length, but it's got the right cooter style pickups in it, which has quickly become one of my favorite guitars. It, it sounds pretty much good in every situation. Um, in any case, so going from the guitar into the Effectrode PC2A, uh, which is an LA2A style compressor. It has an actual tube in it um, with a photo octo coupler, and that's about as smart as I am about it, but it sounds really natural and, and round in 3D uh, into the Analog Man compressor, which is like a Ross compressor. This particular one, hang on, I gotta grab the box. You can order it with the uh, 1979 RCA, um, not sure if it's a transistor capacitor, whatever it is that defined the Ross compressor, he has some of them, you can order them with it. Does it sound any special or different? No, but is it cool? Yes. And I'm stacking that compression together um, uh, to help kind of create kind of a um, almost a even sustain. It's not so much that the signal is too dynamic or I'm not trying to manage uh, peak levels or anything. I'm using it more as an effect into the Zor. Uh, the Zor is a gain pedal that replicates a rolled off fuzz, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I go down to the floor to the Morley Little Alligator, back up into the Para EQ Deluxe, um, which really, you know, most of these gain pedals out there that are, I don't know, desirable for one reason or another, they're desirable because of their... Um, tonality they impart, which is the EQ. So in my mind, um, just about any sort of, you get the breakup, look for a pedal that has the breakup you want, but use an EQ to get the tonal character you want. And that's what I'm using a pair of EQ for here. Uh, then I'm going down into the Chase Bliss, Chase Bliss blooper, uh, into the Montreal Assembly Count to Five, into the MXR Tremolo, into the Chase Bliss Mood Mark II, down into the hologram microcosm, over into the UAFX Galaxy, into the Woodrow, into the Mackie, I can't even see if this is on camera, into the Mackie 402 VLZ4. And the only reason I'm using this is because um, I can add uh, this microphone into the channel if I'm making a video like this, and then into the um, Universal Audio Volt 276, uh, and then into my iPhone, the app I'm using is the Shure uh, Motive Video uh, app, which just, again, for me, this whole setup's kind of um, based on the premise that I just want to get in, turn everything on, play for a few minutes, however long it ends up being, and then get on out. So that's kind of the overriding theme for this application is to just instant gratification and get the hell out, okay? So, that's pretty much your straight sound through the Woodrow. Now on the Woodrow, I have a terrible stand for this camera. This is being shot on my iPhone. So on the Woodrow, I'm obviously running it clean. There's a little bit of room on there. I'm going to back off the mic for a minute just so you can see how much room I'm adding in. Versus, so it's it's not too much different than the actual reverb this room has. But that's the basic dry sound I have right now. This guitar actually has pretty good sustain. That's no compression. Well, I take that back. That does have compression. I forgot that the UA276 has compression. Okay, so first off, coming into the 
sound shaping section of the board, I guess you'd call it. Um, I'll tell you what, one thing that's so irritating is, and i got to figure this out, I'm airplane mode on this iPhone, I still get emails somehow if I'm connected to Wi-Fi, i got to figure that out. All right, in any case... does a nice job of warming everything up. Also add some nice sustain. Okay, then we're going to add in the Analog Man Compressor. Just enough to shape the sound, you know, just stacking a little bit of tone shaping. And again, tons of sustain. I mean, shit, I got three compressors going here. Okay, so next we'll go with the Zor, even though it's not entirely built. The, the my, my core tone isn't entirely built, but... Now the, the, the volume pot on this guitar has almost zero taper, so it's hard to dial in. Alright, I'm going to back off my mic so you can just hear the Zor. It's kind of a good cross section of rolling off uh, the volume as best I can with this guitar at least. Okay, so what I'm using the Para EQ for, like I said, is to kind of shape uh, the overall core tone. Uh, this is a little round, a little dark, which is fine because there's no harsh um, overtones associated with it. So I'm going to just try and reintroduce some of the top end. Pressing it, I'm shaping it, and then I'm using the EQ to kind of bring back the flavor I like with the guitar. And there's two other things I do typically here before we get into any of the graphic effects. First off is the count to five imparts something on the sound. Maybe it's just boost. But that is a factor in my core tone. All I'm doing with that center switch is, and, and I'll talk about this when we get to it, but I'm just um, quantizing the, um, the pitch shifting once we get to it. The other thing that affects uh, the overall core tone here is on the uh, MXR tremolo. It does have a, a, I mean, I call it a preamp, but it's, it's gain compensation. So this arguably is my core clean tone right now. That's the stuff that I pretty much leave on all the time, and then we'll add the Zor in just for comparison. With the Para EQ, I can also kind of 
shape that low end so everything's still there. stuck on trying to EQ that to make it. I love all the overtones you get out of that. Um, but that's where something like the Para EQ Deluxe is maybe the most valuable tool you have on a board like this because there's so much going on. Um, most of the, you know, input gain that you get or input gain distortion you might get is probably due to the EQ being too full so you can really really shape the EQ with that pair EQ especially the deluxe great 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 pedal okay so then we go into the blooper so I'm going to turn on on these bottom two buttons turn on the um, effect so this is one effect that's another effect um, so the left side I have set up to the unquantized um, pitch shifting. And then the right side I have, uh, basically I'm using a low pass filter. Uh, and I, I don't use this as a looper, to be truthful. I love Chase Bliss. I've owned a lunch, bunch of their pedals, and you can see it in my videos if you ever are motivated to dig into my videos. But this thing sucks as a looper. Uh, however, it is incredible as an experimental delay it's better than the habit it's better than the mood and it sounds better than both versions of the mood and the habit uh, i wish whatever they did with the blooper had bled into the mood and or the habit uh, more than it did i also own a habit i do like the habit a lot but it just doesn't sound as good as the blooper um, and for whatever reason the way my workflow is the blooper is way more intuitive to me who knows the habit or the mood might be more intuitive to you but so what I do with that, I'm going to turn on the Galaxy Delay because I, what I do is I use the blooper as a delay, um, a pitch shifted delay, pitch shifted delay, basically uh, set to one measure. So I, I need to hear my my main delay, which is the Galaxy here. One, two, three, four, one. So that's my um, basic delay. So. So the idea here is to let the blooper kind of uh, react to what I'm playing. So I have it set so it's looping, it, it's recording as it loops, um, but this button allows that loop to fade out every pass. So it's effectively like a buffer delay, if that makes any sense. And this middle position here uh, applies the effects to the recorded sound so the sound also degrades uh, and shifts every time it repeats it's almost like an electric piano or something It goes uh, from the Zor to the to the floor to the uh, Morley Little Alligator, so I can do swells. It comes back up into the pair EQ. You can hear the squeaky pedal, which is irritating as hell. But obviously, I don't have the mic on when I'm doing that, so it doesn't bother me otherwise. But for the sake of this video, it's very irritating. Um, so, okay, on to the count to five. Now, the count to five I've done a few videos on. And uh, I still use it the same way I always have. So I quantize it to octaves and fifths. This is a momentary record button. I think you can record up to an eight second long sample. So let's just hit a D. And I hit record after I hit the note. That way it doesn't record the transient. So you get a pretty, um, pretty good drone as a result. And each knob here controls a different record head, so there's effectively three record heads, that's just volume. 
uh, and you can go plus or minus, I want to say, looks like two octaves in reverse, so I'm just messing with the reverse, and then you can do it forward. So what I usually do is I have one that's low octave, this one will be the low octave, this one will be my forward, upper, you know, a fifth I'll put in there, or sometimes, depending on how bright the, the drone is. So I'll leave that as my loop. And if it's too busy, again, you can just back it off into the, into the low. This guitar sounds really good. Um, okay, yeah, so nothing's going on beyond the tremolo. So uh, obviously we're in mono up until the MXR tremolo. And I can't remember, I think I'm using the optical. Only thing I want here out of the MXR is really just some movement and the coloration that that um, gain compensation uh, provides. Because it, the MXR stuff sounds really nice. It sounds very nice. I might try doing a parallel loop with that, which is what I do with the Deluxe Memory Man. Sometimes I'll run the direct out through this, and then I'll run the delayed out to quote-unquote center amp. Because this whole thing came out of the fact, uh, I mean, you can see it over here, I think. There's a Morgan PR5 sitting there. I love my little amps. Um, however, in this environment, i got to keep the headphones on most of the time. So this whole setup is, is me trying to get back into direct recording rather than just having a small amp or multiple small amps in the room. Um, and to be honest, I've tried the IR200 as well as the Iridium so far, and I used to record direct out of headphone jacks in my Gellian Kruger 250ml and my Gellian Kruger 2100 SEL in the 80s and I thought it sounded better than some of these um, some of these amp emulator pedal pedals until I kind of discovered these universal audio pedals. Uh, I think this Woodrow, and I should talk about the Woodrow here for a moment, um, the main reason I got this one instead of the other amp modelers is because you get two really great sounding preamps. The EP3 sound on this actually sounds like an EP3 and the SDD 3000 which is the one I'm using right now uh, sounds amazing I think it, they, they did such a good job with these um, and the cabinet I believe I'm using I'd have to look it up but I think it's the Marshall 412 cabinet so it's a it's an oddball combination for for an oddball pedal but the result is a, the kind of sound I like so this is the, again, the Universal Audio modeling is the only one that I've found that, you know, I mainly got the IR200 because it had the JC120 model on it, and I haven't seen a JC120 model on any of these other modeling um, platforms because uh, I have a JC120. It's one of my favorite amps of all time. Mine's from 1985, I believe. It's upstairs collecting dust, but there's no way you can put a JC120 in a friggin' room in a house and get away with it um, even for myself it's just it's too big of an amp even though the still sounds magical I've got some recordings of it in the old house uh, on the channel here if you want to find it um, having said that um, let's move on to the mood I'm getting uh, off track here so the mood I'm using the left side of the mood as a delay and I'm using the right side of the mood in tape mode um, to kind of replicate kind of a reactive similar to the blooper so I just want it to react to what I'm playing so and, and it's so it's kind of a and I have it on latching so um, I can hold it down and it'll continuously cycle through similar to the blooper it's kind of a, a buffered delay but because it's pitch shifted it sounds like there's a bass guitar kind of following me around so I'll hold that down and latch it uh, and then that's just on as a delay actually let's do it both ways first so this is just the right side So now 
you've almost got a bass accompaniment as well as a, like an electric piano accompaniment. Now, it, uh, here's the thing with these things. Now, if I just go crazy and play crazy, I'm going to end up with some crazy cacophony. The trick is playing to these pedals, you know. Putting them in a situation where they're reacting to what you're playing. You do have to play differently when you have these set up like this, but... And that's part of the fun, right? I'm already getting lost. Okay, so that's just the right side. So the left side is just for a Chase Bliss pedal for a mood. This is as vanilla as it gets. But I am processing the right side through it. And what I, the result of that is, and I have that kind of almost synced up with the, the with the Galaxy. The nice thing about it is I get a little comb filter when they're both on together, which you'll hear in a minute, which is pretty cool. But in the case of this, add the latching mode on the right side in. Sometimes it takes a minute to kind of get the tempo right. All of a sudden we have a little, you know, reactionary accompaniment, which is what I'm looking for. I don't know if I call what I do ambient, but it probably fits most comfortably in the ambient description box, I guess. got a ton of stuff going on here. There's really just two pedals, the blooper and the mood. Okay, so from the mood, now we've got the blooper, kind of like a delay, and I, I do have it earlier in the chain instead of um, later in the chain, only because sometimes I actually do use it as a looper. Um, if I get really crazy sometimes, it, it, it's nice to, um, you can really do some loops with a lot, of, uh, a lot of character with the low pass filter on that thing. It's pretty cool. Okay, so moving down to the microcosm. The microcosm I'm not using in any surprising ways here. The microcosm, surprise, surprise, I'm using a Mosaic 4. Uh, I believe it's quarter notes. I have it at a fairly slow tempo. tempo. Um, as you can see, I have the filter rolled off. This microcosm, for lack of a better way of putting it, kind of does what it wants. Doesn't matter if you're synced with the tempo doesn't matter how you have it dialed in every time you play something it's going to come out a little differently which is in this environment absolutely perfect that's exactly what I want I want all this stuff to kind of be reacting to what I'm playing it's it's, it's like a faux accompaniment here you go I'm going to be I'm going to be the first one to say it. I've never heard anybody say it there's going to be an AI pedal that's going to know how to play along with you and I know the Digitech trio and all that's out there but um, there will be, that's going to be the next big effect that nobody's made yet is an AI pedal. There you go, I called it. Hey, whoever makes that pedal, I want my cut. In any case, the other thing I use the microcosm for is the looper, obviously. So usually I'll make a, I do my little rhythmic um, background only because, again, I, I'm doing this. This is just me sitting down, turning everything on, playing for 10, 20 minutes, whatever it ends up being, uh, and then getting out. So I, my, my rhythms and my, my, I stay wandering around major or minor. I don't do anything fancy um, just because uh, this does not represent any technical part of my day. This is just me having fun. All right, let me do a quick loop on here.
Okay, now again, sometimes I'll embellish on this, I'll add a little rhythm. Um, I don't know. Galaxy always reminds me of a reggae sound. Good enough, a little weird, but good enough. Okay, so now I've got the blooper doing kind of the high reactionary stuff. I've got my pad. I've got this is just more coloration. This is where the uh, signal goes stereo, that's why it's in that spot in the chain. Uh, then I've got the mood handling um, some of the basic delays as well as the, you know, again, I'll call it polyrhythmic bass follower into the microcosm that does whatever the hell it wants on Mosaic 4 along with a rhythmic loop uh, and then we're coming into the Galaxy. The Galaxy, uh, the right side I have set up to just turn on the reverb and it's just a, a classic uh, spring reverb sound. And then the left side is really where the stereo image gets really interesting to me. This is very, very cool sounding. Again, I, I've become a UA fanboy in the course of like three weeks. I went from uh, only having the LA-2A, which may end up on the board, but it's hard to get past that PC-2A from Effect Road uh, with the real tube. It, it, it does sound different. Um, but the LA-2A from UA, which I do have, will probably end up on the board at some point because that thing sounds outstanding as well. But uh, let's add in the Galaxy delay here. As you can hear, it's just, who knows how far off it is between, it's, it's probably 40 milliseconds or something. Somewhere between 40 and 60 milliseconds off, so it just has that light comb filtering. Okay, then I'm going into the wood row into the Mackie 402 VLZ4 and then uh, I'm going out of balance lines to the inputs of the Universal Audio Volt 276 um, at instrument level impedance uh, as you can see oh, can you see this probably not so for whatever reason, and, and I haven't figured, I have messed around with this to figure out why the signal on the left side is uh, weaker than the signal on the right, but I am having to boost the gain on the left side more than the right. In fact, I'm not boosting the gain on the right at all, uh, but I'm using the uh, vintage mode preamp uh, as well as the 76 compressor as kind of a faux you know, mastering stage, I don't know, faux mixing stage. The uh, only reason I have the mixer back here, the Mackie mixer, is just so I can add the microphone in. Um, I could have ordered the 4 channel, uh, the 476 instead of the 276, but I've already got this thing, and I hate to say it because I've never been a fan of Mackie, but the preamp on this thing, I think they're called Onyx preamps. Yeah, Onyx preamps, they really do sound good. Right now, you're listening to the gain maxed. This is a dynamic microphone. This is a Tascam TM70. Is that the name of it? Um, and there's no noise. Uh, and uh, it sounds pretty good. I do have the bottom end rolled off. But um, other than that, it sounds pretty good. I didn't see any reason to just order a four input interface and, and not use this mixer. The mixer sounds great. Uh, and it gives me a couple more options if I, if I get in the mood, so to speak, uh, to try something different uh, with signal routing. So. Um, I think that's pretty much everything other than finishing off with a little jam here. So, uh, yeah, if you have questions, any other questions on any of my effects or settings, um, I really love the sound because I can just, again, pretty much turn everything on, have a little fun. Again, this doesn't represent practice. This doesn't represent even my creative exercise. This is just me sitting down and having some fun so hopefully that's what you're doing at least at some point in your musical day whatever your musical day may be 
um, but I'm going to turn the mic down and just see what I ended up with with this little jam here we've built up. Have a good one. <laughs>